rare and appropriate, rare and appropriate Mallard monologue about the NBA. Now, this is typically something that we would not bring up, but then we had the gift of scandal, which we'll get to in a couple minutes. But this is the part of the calendar. We're in mid to late September now, and training camp is going to open up, believe it or not, less than a week away from training camp. So the news out of the Twin Cities was a neutron bomb. Now, if you have not heard for some reason, maybe not, the Timberwolves in a hastily put-together news release announced that they had fired their president of basketball ops, Gerson Rosas, out. See you later. Uh, The quote from Glenn Taylor, the owner, said, As an organization, we remain committed to building a winning team that our fans and city can be proud of. Uh, Boy, that sounds like any executive anywhere, any owner that changes GMs. Doesn't that sound like that? That doesn't mention the city. It doesn't mention, you know, it doesn't mention the name of the city. It doesn't mention the name of the team. It's just as generic as possible. As an organization, we remain committed to building a winning team that our fans and city can be proud of. Can you say about any team in sports? All right. Way to put some thought into it, Glenn Taylor. He likely had nothing to do with this. This this likely came from some PR hack. And they said, hey, we're going to fire this guy. Uh, do it. So the Timberwolves had hired Rosas with a glowing resume. He is beloved by the basketball media cartel. Back in May of 2019, he was seen as a prodigy in basketball circles, an analytical star, and he was into all of the new thingamajigs that are out there. And, boy, and, and people were so taken aback by this, that even Carl Anthony Towns, the big star of the morbid Timberwolves, he reacted to Rosas' firing with three words, actually three letters, WTF, which does not mean the Washington team football. I think it means something else. Now, the Wolves immediately put in an interim GM in place as they get set to start another miserable season of professional basketball. So let us discuss, though, a lot, of, a lot of overreactions. I like the overreactions. I'm in the overreaction business, but I get a chuckle when people have the wrong overreaction. So we'll get to the scandal in a minute, but let's start with this. The question, does this episode, hiring a GM of May, in May of 2019 and then getting rid of the GM in September of 2021, does that set the franchise back in Minnesota to square one? And I'm shaking my head. You can't see me, but I'm shaking my head no. My views on this, you've got the Pentagon, loose lips, and elevator pitch. And we'll connect all of this together into a nice, neat little package. Now, first of all, chances are you're not a Timberwolves fan, even if you're in Minnesota, and you might not care about the Timberwolves. But this is an interesting story because we have a scandal, and we have someone who is thought of as an up-and-comer in their profession in sports, who has been given an unceremonial departure. But does that mean that the Wolves are back to square one? Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! They already are at square one. They have been treading water in a clogged toilet. That is what that franchise has done. And this is, at, at worst, a lateral move. It doesn't change anything. The Timberwolves have been a circus sideshow. They were a circus sideshow before Gerson Rosas arrived, and they continued down that path during his very brief tenure. The idea that he had started to correct the Wolves' den is a lie. It's farcical. right? The media guys and gals were taken aback because they had no inkling that this was coming. And, and they also, let's be honest here, they liked this guy. Rosas knew how to play the media as the puppeteer. They liked his charming personality, and a lot of people who claim to know a lot of inside information in the NBA were blindsided. This didn't come from Shams or Woj. This didn't come from any of them. And that's the part of the story that ruffled the feathers of the NBA media cartel. Typically, there are rumblings. Right there's it's kind of like when you have a problem with your stomach. Yeah, you, you, when you have like die die diarrhea, when you have that, you kind of know it's coming. Right, you you feel the 
the stomach moving around. Maybe it makes us some sounds. And you know this is not going to end well. But there was none of that. Right? There's none of that. There's no indication, no indication of upheaval from the insider crowd. This was a Pentagon special. Shock and awe. Shock and awe. The NBA scribes who claim to be all omnipresent and know everything and see everything and hear everything. Uh, and not only them, but the Minnesota players were stunned, confused, overwhelmed, paralyzed. All of those big words. But right up until the guillotine came down on Rosas, the GM here, the, the Wolves gave no indication, no indication that any kind of change was going to happen. It was business as usual. We were told that Rosas was still holding meetings at the practice facility on Wednesday morning before being whacked Wednesday afternoon from the job. All right, so secondly, let's get now to the the good stuff here. You might want to put your hazmat suit on. What does this all tell us? Well, it tells us right away when I saw this story, I was like, well, that's that's an okay story, but it's not a great story. And I'm not going to do a monologue on it. When I first heard about this, I'm not going to do a monologue on it. I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what happens here. Because just firing the GM, who cares? But when you have scandal, scandal, entering the story, now you got something. I, we had a, an inkling, as I said, something, something shady had happened, storm clouds hovering around, and it turned out uh, that we were not wrong. Of course, you don't have to be Inspector Gadget to figure this stuff out. We have learned in the hours since this came down that, indeed, a tawdry, taboo scandal has taken place. Now, the word on the street is that Gerson Rosas... According to multiple reports here, the reason he was excommunicated as the Wolves' head of basketball ops fired. was for the term being used, creating a toxic culture, but here's the key part, inappropriate relationship. Now, what does that mean? In layman's terms, he couldn't keep the sausage in the pants. Uh, that's what that means. Now, my spidey-like senses tell me that Someone had loose lips, and they went to what we call HR, human resources, a human resources violation. Me so horny. Me love you long time. Now, Rosas is accused of having a extramarital affair in the office, a little office hanky-panky, with a member of the organization. Hubba, hubba, hubba. I hope it was worth it. That's a good job. That's a high-paying job. Giggity, 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 giggity. I don't know that any uh, piece of you-know-what is worth, uh, worth that, but uh, maybe, maybe that's the case for him. I have no idea. Now, what is the most likely scenario here? I, I've got a couple of options. I don't know the answer, by the way. We're just speculating. That's what we do. We're in the speculation business. So here are the, the thoughts I had. Door number one. So Rosas, the former head of basketball ops of the Wolves, is doing the hanky-panky with one of the assistants in the front office. Decides he wants to end it for whatever reason. That person gets upset and goes to HR. So that's, that's door number one. Door number two is uh, he's going to pound town with this assistant on the Wolves and somebody who's also in the front office of the Wolves finds out that you know they're they're doing the uh making whoopee right there in the office and all that and they're like wait a minute what's going on here and then they get upset and they're jealous that this person's going to get promoted and then they go to HR so those are the two doors i don't have another scenario here uh, i don't have any other scenario other than those two but it's also the payback possibility that uh, you know, this guy, Gerson Rosas, might have uh, screwed over somebody, and uh, this is information that had been whispered. You know, normally, when this stuff happens, you know, I haven't worked at radio stations, I know when, there's, when somebody's uh, fooling around with somebody who's not their, their wife, that usually, I, I'm sure it works the other way as well for women and you know, fooling around with their husband, but that stuff bounces all over the place. People talk. It's just what happens. We all love. It's one of the, the tenets of human, human nature is the gossip. Uh, so, wow, wow. Now, as far as the wolves, let's get back to them. They, they are a convoluted, in a convoluted uh, mess of a transition of powers. Glenn Taylor is slowly, slowly giving up control of the franchise 
over the next couple of years to Alex Rodriguez and some rich guy we've never heard of. It is a tangled web of chaos. It is a tangled web of chaos. And in a bizarre way, this alleged scandal actually works out to be a positive. Because there's one thing that the new owners don't want is leftovers. This takes care of the problem. If you are dabbling in places you can't dabble, the only way you can avoid being excommunicated is by, guess what? Winning. And uh, that didn't happen. Uh, That didn't happen since Rosas took over back in 2019, in May of 2019. The Timberwolves are 42 and 94. They have a 309 franchise winning percentage since he joined the organization. So you mix in that with an old fashioned extramarital affair with an assistant in the office, and it's good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Mostly for liability reasons, the Timberwolves do not want to get sued, and it's certainly not putting their neck out for this guy because he hasn't done anything yet. All right, final thought. So I would like to spitball on who the Wolves will end up hiring as their permanent GM. Now, there have been some big names that have been mentioned. There have been some big names that have been mentioned, relatively speaking. Uh, Going forward, though, I would keep an eye out on one name in particular. And you know who that is? You want to take a guess? You got a guess? Alex Rodriguez. A-Rod. Who says no? Who says no? He couldn't do any worse than the other boobs that have been the the de facto GM of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So I'm going to make my elevator pitch for A-Rod. Alex Rodriguez, We know what we know about him is he's a shady actor. He's got an immense ego. He craves the spotlight and attention. He's an attention whore. He also fancies himself a Jerry Jones-type figure. He thinks he's the smartest man in the room. So if you think you're the smartest man in the room, why would you go out and hire somebody else? Now... The problem is I'm pretty confident the NBA does not allow the owner to be the actual GM in title. That's not kosher. But there are workarounds. There are absolutely workarounds, right? Hire a sock puppet, and you are the shadow executive. And A-Rod can call the shots. Not that he knows anything about basketball, but why not? He played it when he was like eight years old in Miami, so that's good enough. Now, the other possibility would go out and get uh, somebody that has a massive ego like yourself, if you're A-Rod, and someone you can hobnob with, another bullcrap artist. And the name that I see popping up on my radar is Isaiah Thomas. I'm talking about the old Isaiah Thomas from the Bad Boys back in the day. He's How many franchises has A-Rod run? Or not A-Rod. Uh, well, A-Rod's done his own problems, but uh, Isaiah Thomas. How many franchises has he run into the ground? He ruined the CBA, the Continental Basketball Association, was a disaster with the Knicks. I don't remember amazing things when he was with the Indiana Pacers. I I think that's the list. Maybe I'm missing something. I've also, i got to chuckle out of this. I've seen Elton Brand's name mentioned. That that has been floated, likely by Elton Brand's agent, because he has nothing to do in Philadelphia. So it's... (laughs) No, he does. I mean, they hired Daryl Morey. He's just kind of hanging out, collecting a paycheck, and so what the hell? 